The Morning News on YourIowa.com is brought to you by the Commission on U.S. Territories, striving for equal representation around the globe, and by Keep Iowa First, committed to keeping the Iowa caucuses the first in the nation contest in selecting the presidency of the United States. And now, here's your host, Brent Rothke. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us today. Obviously, a huge uh, week in news and in politics, etc. So very happy to have on today uh, Iowa State Representative Karen Derry. We're going to talk about what's going on in the Capitol and uh, more importantly to Iowans, what's going on here in the state. Also have on the amazing producer, director, Milena Govich. Uh, started as an actress on Broadway, is now a major producer, director for primetime television shows like Chicago Med and FBI. The list goes on. So definitely want to stick around for that had a lovely chat with her just a few days ago recorded it um but uh, we have uh, miss dairy on live this morning as well as jeff bruning a local restaurateur we're going to chat with him uh folks if uh you know it's interesting where you get context from uh in the world these days with the internet Arnold Schwarzenegger released a video yesterday that i think really encaptures not only uh you know the the, the drasticness of what happened last week, uh, but also gives it some context in regards to World War II. I definitely uh, recommend taking a look at that. You can find that on my Twitter account. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think pushed uh, Georgia over the top for uh, Democrats was the $2,000 uh, stimulus package uh, being talked about. And there was some back and forth as to what a Biden administration would do. This uh, Joe Biden tweeted this last night. 600 is simply not enough when you have to choose between paying rent or putting food on the table. We need $2,000 stimulus checks. That was just sent out just last night to give an idea of where he stands. Uh, but without further delay, let's uh, let's bring on, well, there's Karen Derry. Hello. Uh, thanks so much for being on the program today, Karen. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. And uh, so uh, Iowa State House of Representatives is getting gaveled in and uh, a lot of things uh, to be worked on. Uh, what uh, what were you excited to work on then and what, what do you think they're going to be uh, really pushing for this year? Right. I mean, I had I been reelected, I would have loved to have seen some further progress made with child care. Um, the House did pass some measures last year that address the cliff effect, made more people eligible for assistance with child care. And I think that that's a good start. Um, so hopefully the Senate will pick that up this year and they'll, they'll move forward with it. I would have loved to have seen us adequately funding our public schools, of course. Um, I don't think that will be the case this year. In fact, I, I suspect that this year uh, will be the year that, you know, Republicans finally, um, with their very strong majority now in the House and in the Senate, um, start passing uh, bills that take dollars, public dollars, away from our public schools and give it to private schools through a voucher system. And so that's a big concern. You know, people, uh, you know, listen to all these different um priorities and things that folks want to do. And uh, I hear a lot, well, is there enough money in the kitty to go around? Uh, would it, you know, would that be taking from a different uh, thing that is needed to spend on? How, how does that work up there? Well, and, and, and I think what you're talking about is, is absolutely the concern of, of so many people like me. Um, you know, if there were all the money in the world, then I'd have no objection to, you know, providing some vouchers. People who sacrifice so that they can send their kids to the, a, a private school, those families, I mean, I admire them and I appreciate why they would want, you know, some help with that. Um, and if we could afford it, that would be great. But the fact is, is that um, our schools have been underfunded for the last 10 years. I mean, we've been having one to 2% increases in state aid to the schools, and um, that's not even enough to keep up with inflation. Uh, so that's, that's the issue. That's the problem. 
Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, big news and events at the U.S. Capitol this last week. Uh, just today, it's talking that uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Congressman Ted Lieu and Congressman Jamie Raskin are going to be uh, uh, presenting articles of impeachment. Uh, if you were a federal officer, what would you be advocating for? I, well, um, I, th I think the, the best thing for everyone would be if Trump would just resign. And if I had a magic wand and I could make anything happen, that would be my choice. Um, were, were I, you know, in, in Congress, I would support impeachment. Um, you know, I understand all of the, the concerns um, about timing and that type of thing, and those are valid concerns. But when you look right at it, we can't let this go unchecked. You know, there, we need to take serious steps about this because we can't ever have something like this happen again. Uh, we are in the third district, Polk County here. Cindy Axney is the representative. She released this statement, uh, 25th Amendment must be immediately revoked, uh, invoked and removed him from office. So obviously a lot of uh, strong concerns, strong thoughts out there, and we will uh, all be watching the news today to see how that unfolds. So Karen, just kind of uh, before uh, before uh, I let you go, and thank you so much uh, for being on the program this morning. Um, if, if you had uh, a magic wand and could set the agenda, for the for the legislative session that's about to be gaveled in, what what do you hope that uh, folks really focus on up there? Well, I mean, COVID, COVID, COVID. Uh, you know, we have got to do take. We have to take this um, this pandemic more seriously. There's no doubt that um, we need to make sure that people are wearing masks, that people are being as safe as they possibly can. Um, unfortunately, the govern the Republican leadership. You know, hasn't hasn't been doing that, and I think a, the strong example is the fact that they're not requiring masks in the Capitol. They're not requiring masks. They're not requiring people to report when they have COVID in the Capitol. I mean, you've been to the Iowa Capitol. You know, I mean, what could possibly go wrong by not wearing masks? You know, right? Uh, so, you know, we we got to get that under control. I know everybody wants kids back in school. I Everybody wants kids back in school full time. We're not going to be able to do it safely in, for, for the long term until we get this under control. So we got it. We got to be helping small businesses. We have to be helping families get through this crisis. Uh, former State Representative Karen Derry. I first met her when I was uh, five years old up at the lake in Minnesota. It's great to see you again. Thank you so much for being on the show. Good to see you. Have a great week and stay safe. Uh, folks, last week we had on uh, the Senior Communications Director for the United Nations High Commission on Refugees. We're going to show a short video that they were so happy to, uh, so kind to provide to us. Then we're going to come back with Jeff Bruning and talk about local restaurants. Don't go anywhere. When the crisis raised, all my dreams has been destroyed. Welcome back to the program. Uh, if you live uh, in the Des Moines area like I do, you are a big fan of this gentleman. Whether or not you actually know him by face, you know what he does, which is create some of the best bars and restaurants in the area. Jeff Brunig, thank you so much for being on the program today. 
Thanks for having me, Brett. So uh, why don't you give folks just a, a rundown of not only the businesses you've started in town here, but uh, the new hot ticket, as it were, something that folks should uh, keep on their radar. Uh, well, I, I think people know us uh, from the Bait Shop High Life or uh, Buzzer Billy's, Fong's, uh, the Iowa Tap Room. Uh, but the new ones uh, we've done during uh, over the last little bit, uh, Ken's Not So Secret Speakeasy, uh, Rita's. Uh, next to Truman's, uh, Rita's a Cantina, um, and then uh, Lucky Horse uh, Beer and Burgers is the new one in the uh, Drake University area. You know what? What is amazing about it, it, folks? If you're not from this area, those those are the big winners in town here, and it it is not an easy thing uh, to start a, a restaurant or bar establishment in Iowa. What do you? I mean, what's the special sauce? Everyone, everyone that you folks come up with uh, seems like it's a hit. What what separates you guys and uh, sets you apart? Um, I don't know. I guess we have a lot of uh, we're lucky enough to have a lot of right and left brain uh, activity in our company. We. <laughs> We have some, uh, um, you know, some real big imaginations and uh, but then some real uh, uh, financially minded uh, people, you know, partners in my company. <clears throat> and we just kind of keep it in the right spot. Uh, we we have a real big interest in traveling around. You know, the one thing about being in Des Moines is is that uh, we can go out to New York or, or San Diego or to Europe and see what's kind of new and cool or things that people are doing and then bring it back to Des Moines. And it's, it's a new thing for Des Moines. So yeah. we get to present a new idea to Des Moines. That's not really new and it's already kind of been fleshed out in the world. And so that's kind of what we had done in the past. Um, and then, you know, and then we just kind of riff on our own creativity. So there's a lot of opportunity Des Moines. I mean, as you know, is a, is a unique space. Uh, it's a, I think Des Moines or Iowa in general is like our restaurants. You kind of heard of them maybe but once you've gone to it you're like oh this is a lot cooler than people are saying it is you know <laughs> you know that, that should be the new state motto iowa a lot cooler than people think it is it sort of sound like the nebraska one it's not for everyone <laughs> 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 and you know, I think you're right about that. I know, uh, you know, usually my entrance into the conversation is talking about uh, real estate value and how much farther your dollar goes when it comes to buying a house or a commercial building, etc. But uh, it 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 that continues on your value when you go out to eat when you when you get stuff. So uh, if folks are thinking about uh, having a, a special dinner tonight, you guys are obviously probably doing uh, what dine in and take out uh, safely, I imagine. Yeah. Yes. Like. Uh Representative uh, Derry said before, you know, COVID, 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 um, it's on our mind. Um, SBA uh, and PPP starts this week. Uh, so those are the things we're working on to make sure we can uh, keep our financial uh, situation safe. But uh, yes, wear a mask. We everywhere at our company, we wear masks. Uh, we have socially distanced. We have curbside service. We have third party delivery and our own delivery. We're, we're doing everything we can to get us out to you in the most safe manner uh you know however you feel comfortable we're we're doing it you know we've we're not going anywhere um uh we're gonna get through this and 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 uh our places are still fun to go to they're just a little bit different right now but uh, uh give us a few months G give every give everything a few months uh, a little patience and it'll be great you know, I think you just said it there. Uh, you just said we're going to be around. Uh, we're going to be here. And uh, folks watching this uh, in the in the central Iowa area, this is this is how you do something concrete uh, to tell to help out Iowans to help our community. Uh, if you don't want to go in person, order some takeout. If you want to go be sit, socially distanced, sit in the sit in the restaurant there. Go support a local business. And uh, again. Uh, Jeff's company here. They just keep hitting it out of the park. So uh, thank you so much for being on the program. And, and uh, for, for selfish reasons, thank you for doing what you do. Your restaurants are, are one of the, you know, when I have uh, family friends come into town and visit, I'm, I'm always that night at one of your restaurants, uh, showing them around and uh, getting them a, a good dinner. So uh, I appreciate it. So thank you, Jeff. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I look forward to seeing you and, and everyone else in the future. You got it. I love it. All right, folks, um, we're going to uh, come right back with uh, Primetime TV director Milena Govich right after a piece I directed with the cast of the West Wings for Justice for Vets. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Most veterans return to our communities as leaders. 
But everyone's journey home is not the same. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. Without assistance, the downward spiral can be quick and destructive. It doesn't have to be this way. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Justice for Vets is the only national organization dedicated to the expansion of veterans' treatment courts. Veterans' treatment courts hold our veterans accountable for their actions. By providing structure, treatment, and mentoring, these courts help our veterans and their families get their lives back on track. And veterans' treatment courts work. We ask much of our men and women in uniform, and they ask little in return. It is our collective duty to come to their aid when they struggle on the home front. This not only honors their sacrifice, but makes our communities stronger. A donation to Justice for Vets helps put a veterans' treatment court within reach of every veteran in need. A donation to Justice for Vets keeps veterans and treatment where they belong. A donation to Justice for Vets shows your commitment to leaving no veteran behind. A donation to Justice for Vets will help save lives, restore families, and rebuild communities. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. Thank you. Folks, welcome back to the program. I am uh, just always, always so grateful, grateful to the amazing, amazing, amazing folks who come, folks on, come this on this program. program. And today, today is no exception. Is no exception. I, 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 met I met this person, this person several, several years, years ago in, in a writer's, writer's group, group that, that we're going to talk, talk about in a little bit, but have just watched uh, from afar, literally, as I moved from Los Angeles and came here to Iowa, watched from afar the amazing things she's been doing over the last several years. The shake my head, big things, incredible big things. Milena Govich is on the show. Milena, thanks so much for being on today. So glad to be here. So, you know, I, I, you look at the bottom underneath your name. Look, like these are not small shows. These are not, <laughs> Law and Order, uh, you know, Esther Patha Merkerson. I had the tiny, I, I directed her in commercials uh, a few years back. Got to know her just a little bit. You get to direct her in a show. First, you're a co-star with her on Law and Order. Then you get to direct her on, it, it's an incredible. So why don't you... Why don't you give folks, before we go to specifics, you were a Broadway actor, and then you said, okay, then you were a Hollywood actor, and now you're doing producing and directing. Talk about that transition from actor to say, okay, now I'm looking to do something different. Well, um, in some ways, it was very in intentional to make all these transitions, and in other ways, if you asked me when I was growing up in Oklahoma where I'd be at this point in my life, I could literally could not have even imagined this. <laughs> um, so it's been, it's been a fun, um, exciting, terrifying journey um, across the board. But yes, I started singing, dancing, and playing instruments on Broadway, and that was my first professional career. Uh, so I was in New York for 10 years, and over the course of doing theater in, in New York, I, of course, became interested in film and television work. And while I was doing Broadway, I started auditioning for, and got, you know, some small TV roles. Um, I was on Rescue Me for two seasons, the Dennis Leary show, which was uh, a really great introduction into the television world. Um, and then I was lucky enough to be cast on Law and Order. Um, I was the only female detective in the whole 20 year run of the original series. So. Oh, I didn't know that stat. That's yeah, great. Yeah, that's that's my Jeopardy question. Is like, who was the only chick with a gun on Law and Order? <laughs> that's love it. Love it. <laughs> um, and uh, after a number of series regular jobs on te television. Um, I found myself craving more collaboration. You know, going back to my theater roots, when you're putting up um, a new show, you're in the same room with everybody for five weeks, six weeks. You know, the director's there, the choreographer's there, the, the writers are there, the producers, and you're all trying to figure it out together. Um, that process is much more segmented in film and especially in television. By the time the actors come on board, there have already been months, sometimes years of decisions already made. So that really prompted me to want to learn more uh, about uh, directing and producing in film and television. So on the last series that I was on as an actor, I started shadowing the directors and my producers um, and the network and everyone were very supportive of that idea. So I kind of got unprecedented access to the behind the scenes. Um, created my own little film school and then started making my own short films, which got me into AFI and South by Southwest 
And uh, I circled back to um, my friends at Wolf Films, the Dick Wolf Company, and uh, asked them to look at me in a new light, uh, not just as an actor, but also as a director. And they gave me my first shot on Chicago Med. And uh, I'm really grateful to them for that. And I've been continuing to work as a director ever since. I mean, not today because it's a pandemic, but <laughs> I did just go back to Chicago Med. Um, I actually just got home a couple weeks ago. I did um, two back-to-back -back episodes for them um, during the pandemic, which was a uh, um, an eye-opening experience for sure. You know, uh, and and uh, so you and I met in uh, Richard Schiff's writing group. We met in uh, Richard's living room. He yes. uh, had you know as a, as a, a band of somewhere between. 10 and 20 folks get together and we kick around scripts and all that sort of thing. But that must have been, you know, I, the time that you spent on Dennis Leary's show and all those other things. But I don't know if there's a better if there's better training in the world to be there and watch how it's done uh, right at the front lines there. Was there were there specific television directors that you like their style that, you know, especially TV, it's such a machine, but that they, you know, always kept their cool or what What were some of the, the qualities that you saw in other directors that you said, oh, yeah, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to grab that? Well, you're right. I, I Coming from an actor, at an acting position, I had the opportunity to work with tons of directors. You know, many people go into directing, they're just doing their directing and you never really cross paths with other directors so much. Um, but I got to um, observe and collaborate with a wide range of people. And yes, there are a number of people who I admire. Um, Jennifer Lynch is someone that I shadowed with a lot. Um, and she has now gone on to have an incredible career. Um, she comes from the film world, but also in and but is also steeped in television. So I learned a lot from her about how to motivate a crew and how to um, collaborate with people and get people excited to do do the work of the day, you know? Um, Norman Buckley is another director that um, I am very close to and who's been great. And Michael Pressman, who is, um, he's had an incredibly varied career, also very steep in the theater world, um, and uh, and has directed you know, award-winning award -winning films and is a prolific TV producer as well. Uh, so those those are just a couple that jump to mind. There are, of course, the ones where, you know, you're watching, you're like, Okay, note to self and not doing it like that. <laughs> For sure. For sure. So, you know, let's give a, because, um, you know, I, I I don't have the benefit of having a primetime TV background. So give folks some idea about, so uh, Chicago Med, I just watched one of your, your episodes, Needle in the Heart, mm -hmm. which it's it's available. Go watch it online, and I'm going to give a spoiler. There's a needle in a heart in the, in the <laughs> but there's a lot of um, one of the amazing things about that whole thing. The Chicago trilogy, the characters interact on this show. It's the then all of a sudden the ambulance drivers on this show and the fire. And, but give folks an idea. Of, so now that you're uh, obviously behind the scenes directing, running the show, what sort of prep time goes into it? And then what is a what is a, a prime time drama right now? What do you get? Ten days? You get six days? How many days do you get to shoot something like that? It is it is intense. It's a very tough schedule, um, made even tougher with all the COVID protocols now. But in uh, in the before times, <laughs> you typically typically um, get seven days to prepare an episode, and that means you receive your script on day one. It's not like you get your script ahead of time. They basically plunk a script down in front of you the night before, and the next morning you are up in your meetings and running the show. So you have to be really, really fast on your feet. Um, then once you are into production, it's typically eight days, eight shooting days, um, you know, not weekends, but Monday through Friday typically. Uh, so the shows like the Chicago show, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, FBI, these, these big, um, these big shows, it's like shooting a action movie yeah. in eight days. It's like shooting half of an action movie in every eight days, yeah. especially in like Chicago Fire or FBI this, this, that has stunts and special effects and, you know, big set pieces. So um, you really have to be prepared. And so you don't sleep a lot <laughs> during that time. Um, but, you know, fortunately, there are great teams of people involved in all the shows that I've worked on. Uh, I've collaborated with some excellent production designers and cinematographers and, and other producers that are helping you along the way. So um, I, I think the, the greatest thing I always keep in mind is that I, I, am, I am not a dictator. 
<laughs> right? I'm a leader of a whole team of people. And the more I can activate all the people around me and be clear about the vision and the direction that we're going, uh, the better the outcome is going to be. Boy, folks, that's, that is it right there. That's the key to great business. That's the key to great art. Uh, just, I love that. Now talk about, so, okay, that's amazing. You're directing the series finale of this show. That's so, I mean, like big, big episodes. And then all of a sudden FBI comes around. And why don't you tell folks about your incredible involvement in that show? Yeah, there's um, a position on television series called a producing director. And guest directors on TV shows come and go. So you come for, to do one episode at a time usually, and then you move to a different show. Um, the producing director stays on as part of the producing team throughout the, the season. And it, it, part of my job as a producing director on FBI was to be a creative producer on set. So really overseeing the character arcs throughout the episodes, um, making sure there's consistency in the writing and in the performances. And so it's, it, while I wasn't directing all of the episodes, I was heavily involved in the directing portion of all the episodes. It's very important to have somebody there that's got their eye on all of those things, especially on shows that are more episodic in nature rather than serialized in nature, just so you can keep the, the through line consistent. And so uh, that season, I mean, how many months are we talking about? And I mean, are we just talking about 16, 18 hour days every day? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, pretty much. I mean, I'm not uh, shooting. We, we try in, in the last several years, there have been major efforts made by um, Universal Studios to keep our working days to 14 hours and to not go over 14 hours. Which, you know, even saying that, like, we pop like, 14, yeah. yeah that's, the, that's the improvement is that we're only doing max 14 hours a day. <laughs> So, yeah, and especially on the producing side of things, because you're not just involved in the episode that's shooting at the moment. You're also working, prepping the episode that's next in line coming up. You're also dealing with things that are um, happening in post for the episode that just wrapped. So you're kind of always, and then maybe you're reading an outline for the episode that's like on deck back there, you know. So so you're you're constantly trying to keep a lot of plates spinning at once. I find it really exciting and fun. Um, I love puzzles and I love people. So this is kind of the marriage of all of that. It's a people puzzle. <laughs> but yes, it is intense. Uh, and so uh, how many, uh, so that FBI with you as producer director, how long was that assignment for you? Uh, that was for the year. Yeah. yeah. So that, that year you were FBI. That's it. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, that's first of all, that's incredible. And how many, how many, uh, uh, how many one-hour episodes did you guys put out that year? Uh, all I can't remember exactly. It was either twenty-one or twenty-two for that season. Twenty-two yeah. hours yeah. of primetime television. And so people, you know, so my friend Chuck Bowman directed A.T. MacGyver, all those sorts of shows, and he he has a number, and I, I, I'm i sorry I forget, uh, Chuck, how many hours it is, but he's got the number. I directed X amount of hours of primetime television, oh, and wow. people realize, you know, a, a motion picture is 90 minutes, but they get so much time to do it. You're talking about eight days, and the quality level, people expect so much now from uh, television, uh, you know, I think with all the streamers and these budgets that are just outrageously large, they expect a motion picture every time they turn on their big screen TV right now. What sort of, uh, not to not to pile on the, the anxiety chat, but the night before a shoot, I mean, you know, especially when you were directing, that, I mean, what's, what's going through your mind there to make sure that you're gonna get those shots? Well, um, I always try to have a plan A, B, and maybe even a plan C. Um, it's it's much like, uh, it's, it's not that different than acting, honestly, because you want to come prepared. You want to know who you are, where you're going, what you need, what you're going to do. Um, but you have to stay loose. You have to be able to respond to what's happening in front of you. You have to be able to pivot. And I find the more prepared I am and the more I know my story, I, I get this feeling of like, 
digging deep, kind of cocooning into the story, just <laughs> really, really knowing that story in my bones so that when things inevitably do go wrong or you show up and all of a sudden you're locked out of the location or one of your actors has turned up sick and now you need to flip the scene orders for the day, that you can do that. Yeah. And um, that's that's the... I would say that's the thing I concentrate on, say, the night before. The homework has already been done. I almost find it much of a relief to start shooting because there's so much that goes into the preparation. And if you've done your preparation, it's it's a release to just start getting it done. So I, I've done a lot of independent films, but I've never directed something on that scale. So a tip of the hat to you. I'm just <laughs> that's fascinating. My question is this, I, you know, I've, I've done a lot of productions at smaller budgets where it always seems like you're coming up with it on the day. You know what? Okay, that didn't work out. Da, da, da. I'm curious when you've got the machinery of NBC Network behind you, the Dick Wolf brand and all that sort of thing. How many times in, 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 your, <laughs> in your shoots is it, okay, we're going to have to just do this and you're coming up with it on the spot? Or is usually there some sort of regimented or it, it, it is, are there points when you say, boy, this feels like a $50 show right now? <laughs> there, there is a joke of sometimes if you get, if you get painted into a corner, you say, okay, well, what's the student film version of this? <laughs> How can we just get this done? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, that doesn't happen very often. I, I'm joking yeah. about that. But um, I, I would say I never fortunately have been in a position where I have to scrap everything and just figure out something from scratch. Usually um, the changes are a variation on what the plan already was because also you're dealing with 150 person crew with like oh. five ton trucks all parked around the block and permits that have been pulled. You know, there's you really on this scale, you can't just go on the fly. It's, we're just the footprint is too big to do anything like that. So, so really, what it is, it's finding the variations within the plan and grabbing, maybe grabbing from this or grabbing from that or flip flopping something. Um, but rarely is it scrap it, start over. Well, folks, uh, Milena Govich, again, look at these credits Law and Order, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, FBI. So, the, I mean, just mega shows. Uh, what's I, I realize pandemic throws a big question mark into everything, but what does the future hold for you? Uh, well, I have some more episodic gigs on the horizon. Um, as you mentioned, the pandemic is making scheduling a little difficult. So we'll see how everything shakes out, especially now here in Southern California, where um, most productions are pausing and not coming back from the holiday hiatus until our um, ICU bed situation gets better in Los Angeles County, which is just yeah. devastating. Um, so I can't tell you specifics on that at the moment, but I also have some uh, projects that I'm developing myself. I'm attached to direct a pilot for MGM right now that we'll be taking out in the next few weeks. Um, I also collaborate producing with my husband, David Cornu, who um, has a pilot called Triage at ABC that is doing their audience testing today. So fingers crossed for that. If that, if that goes to series, um, I will be somewhat involved in that we'll we'll see what happens um if they get their pick up uh so yeah lots of exciting things on the horizon uh, do you two ever get to see each other you always working um occasionally <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, hey. the pandemic has made the travel um we have a three-week rule where in our whole marriage we've not gone more than three weeks without seeing each other somebody always travels however when i went to chicago this fall um that was two months of being away and because of the pandemic um we did not travel so that was tough that was we were not a fan of that but uh but yeah we we make an effort yeah i mean the, the sacrifice of the sh of show business is not insignificant true 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 uh melena govich is killing it in hollywood and i just i'm so excited for you congratulations on everything and thank you so much for taking time today to chat with us absolutely thank you so much for having me brent all right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more of the program. Don't go anywhere.